Yeah, so Sujata Din, she's a health coach um, working with uh, busy people and busy lifestyles, as she said it, who want to get healthier. And she has a particular um, sort of clientele within the South Asian community as well. Mm. Um, and she works to ensure how people can actually continue to have the cultural cuisines, as you guys said, like the chaat masala mm. and the samosa and the pakore, but whilst also maintaining good nutrition. And um, her whole em- emphasis is around diet, lifestyle, and a good mindset. But um, in our conversation, we also talk about good nutrition in Ramadan in particular. <laughs> Why should nutrition even be considered during Ramadan? I mean, what what is the importance of keeping good nutrition during Ramadan? I think it's very important um, to think about nutrition and actually to start planning for it even before Ramadan begins because in our day-to-day lives, most of us are used to, you know, eating throughout the day, whether it's having three meals or a few snacks. Or some people are, in fact, just grazing through the day. And when we go, uh, you know, uh, into a fasting state from eating constantly, it can be a bit of a shock to the body. So it's really about preparing the body rather than just sort of overnight saying, well, tomorrow I start the fasting. So prepare for it because when you're fasting, you're going to be having, um, you know, meals just first thing in the morning, quite early in the morning, and then you're going to be having, you know, uh, the evening meal at Iftar. So when you're doing a fast and you're not having food, you know, throughout the day, plus you're not also drinking water, it can have an effect on many things, uh, including your energy levels, because you won't be eating through the day. So you have to prepare yourself in having the right foods in the morning, uh, or else you'll feel hungry, you'll feel tired, you'll feel lethargic. Um, Another point is digestion. You know, our digestion can be affected if we're not eating the right foods. And if we're eating, you know, um, foods that are too heavy for us or too spicy for us, you know, it could cause things like um, acid reflux. It could cause bloating. And even for some people, they begin, begin to find, you know, normally they're not constipated, but then suddenly they're constipated because they're not getting enough fiber in the day as well. Um, another point why nutrition is important is because people begin to struggle with headaches. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, when they're not eating. So, you know, eat well so you don't suffer with, you know, these symptoms. Uh, Immunity, we've got to be thinking about, you know, having the right balance of nutrition, whether it's protein, fiber, uh, healthy fats, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants. All this is important to support our immunity. And, um, And then another one is sleep. You know, we need to think about what we're eating because what we eat to an extent does affect our sleep as well. Because if Mm. we do not eat the right food and or if we eat too late at night, um, you know, again, it can cause indigestion. We can find, you know, we're getting acidity and we're not sleeping well through the night. That's absolutely brilliant. And you have Muslim clients too amongst your wider clientele and you've devised specific programs and recipes, particularly for the Ramadan month as well. And I just yeah. wanted to ask, what are the common perhaps nutritional issues and concerns that you've seen in your line of work um, with uh, Muslims and clients in particular whilst they're fasting during Ramadan and, you know, how, how can we even avoid, avoid that? I think um, a big common mistake is not planning ahead, which is why even before you start going into Ramadan, uh, you know, uh, we've still got a few days to prepare, you know, just start planning ahead. Look at what you've got in your fridge. Look at what you've got in your pantry. Begin to create a meal plan. Think about what you're going to have the time to prepare um, at night so you can wake up in the morning and have it uh, immediately rather than last minute trying to scramble and, you know, put a meal together. So planning is really key. And and once you plan, Mm -hmm. you'll find you're able to, you know, go through it more smoothly um, and you're not sort of struggling through the day. Um, another thing is, you know, the uh, morning meal at Seri. You know, some people decide, you know, it's too early in the morning, I'm not going to eat anything. So they end up mm. eating nothing and then they're tired through the day. Others just think of, well, let me get the most convenient food and they may end up having a high sugar cereal or they're just having, you know, some toast with it um, and lots of jam on it. And again, that's not going to sustain them through the day because it just ends up being um, very high in sugar. And and if they're using white bread, it's not really high in fiber either. Um, And then, you know, there's a group of people who just think, well, you know, I'm going to have a proper meal to start the day. So they have, you know, it's almost like um, what they'd have for lunch. They're having that in the morning. And, you know, if you're having things like paris or if you're having baratas, um, that's quite heavy to have first in the morning, but it also might be quite uh, quite spicy and salty, which means Mm -hmm. you're thirsty 
through the day. So, you know, just avoid these mistakes um, when, you know, you're, you're planning for the first meal of the day. Um, and then the other thing I found very common and, you know, people can begin to just manage how they're breaking the fast at Iftar. So dates are commonly eaten. It's traditional to eat dates, but rather than having, you know, like four or five dates, can you just keep it to one or two dates? Because mm-hmm. dates are healthy for us. Um, you know, they're natural sugars, but they are very high in sugar. So, you know, an average, like one date can have up to 16 grams of sugar. And just oh, wow. put it into context, one teaspoon is four grams of sugar. So if you're having a grape that has got 16 grams of sugar, you've almost had the equivalent of four teaspoons of sugar, you know, um, mm. in one date. So if you end up having, you know, many dates, four or five dates, that's a lot of sugar you're having. And you may be thinking it's all natural, it's all healthy, but it's still sugar. So, you know, important, you just keep it to maybe one or maximum uh, two dates that you have at uh, that time. And um, and then because people are feeling tired when, you know, they're breaking the fast, they, they think, well, I haven't eaten, that's why I'm feeling tired. But also you haven't drunk any water. And we find it hard to differentiate between, you know, hunger and thirst. And when we feel tired, it's just normal for all of us. When we're feeling tired, we just think, okay, I need to eat something and I need to eat something with sugar that's going to give me energy. But instead of turning just to food, can you start by, you know, having some water mm. um, and, and not just turning to food um, when, when you're um, breaking your fast? Um, and then also, if you end up having a very big snack, you know, if you're having your samosas and your pakoras um, when you've broken the fast, uh, you're not going to be hungry later at dinner time because it was a very big snack. Then you end up having dinner too late at night. So, you know, just sort of like keep it to manageable portions, things that, you know, won't fill you up when you're having these bar, but then you can have something bigger later as well. Um, and uh, and I see the meals often, the problem is they are used to having things with too much fat, uh, too much sugar in them, and not enough vegetables. Vegetables are mm. you know a, a food group that gets forgotten nobody finds them exciting and you know i'm always promoting vegetables i always say have the vegetables in any form that you like them without deep frying them so you know pakoras are an exception but just try and have vegetables um that you like the taste of so you know making your um traditional curries with them if you want to have bindi mm-hmm. or gobi um you know a- anything you want to make or salad or you want to do a stir fry um, you can cook them in any way that you like to, but make sure you do include vegetables always. Um, and I know this is not food related, but um, another mistake people will make is, you know, they decide they're just going to live a very sedentary life. They think, well, I'm, I'm fasting, you know, I don't have much energy, so I'm not going to do much. You don't need to yeah. exercise, but try and at least maintain a walk, right, mm. during this period. That would be important that you can do that. Sure. Uh, you can make savia as well. So that's, you know, again, mm-hmm. a healthy option um, that you can just begin thinking, okay, I want to have something sweet, but can I sort of um, the the shop bought rasmalai gulab jamun, ras gulab jamun, mm-hmm. you know, drenched in, in sugar and high in fat. Can I make some of these at home? Um, can I, instead of like having a dessert, just have some Greek yogurt with some fresh fruit and some nuts or seeds on it? You know, that mm-hmm. tastes equally quite nice. So begin to work on changing your palate over Ramadan, so you can reset your palate, and then when it ends, you actually find certain foods become too sweet for you because you're not used to eating them. You actually don't feel like eating those foods at that point. I mean, that's extraordinary. I understand. Thank yeah. you so much for this. I, I think just coming from your conversation and coming away from it, it's like yeah. you know, even from my age, my generation, that typically sort of shack away yeah. from yeah. Asian cuisine and food because. You know, when when you become educated at some level of nutrition, you think that actually the, the sort of cultural cuisine that we're brought up in is inherently just um, nutritionally bad. But you you know you put some good tips in there anyway to you know sort of substitute certain things and not to eliminate entirely. Um, no, don't you- eliminate. Yeah, don't eliminate because when you eliminate, you feel like you're missing it. And when you feel like mm. you're missing it, you want it even more. So you can still have samosas but, or pakoras, but you know, instead of deep frying them, many homes now have air fryers. Could you use an mm. air fryer and, and use that to cook? So it's just making slight tweaks and thinking, you know, I don't need to stop it, but what can I do to still have these foods as well? 
space. So coming off like things like soft drinks and saying, you know, can I begin to drink more water and, and mm-hmm. continuing with that then even, you know, after Ramadan. I mean, this is absolutely uh, incredible. Thank you so much, Zaza, for your time. Um, yeah, absolute pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.